to help us better understand intermolecular forces and how they affect physical properties of organic molecules, let's now direct our attention to alcohols. And the first basic principle that I'd like you to know is that the higher the molecular weight of an alcohol, the higher its boiling point, and also the higher its melting point. However, alcohols have some of the highest boiling points out of most of the organic molecules. And this we need to understand why. So let me show you. Let's first look at the most electronegative atoms. And these happen to be F, O, and N. F is the most electronegative, O is second most, N is third most electronegative. And let's consider the bond that these atoms would make with a hydrogen. So for instance, let's think about the HF bond. F is more electronegative than hydrogen, so this bond would be polar with the F being partially negative and the H being partially positive. And let's think about the attraction of two HF molecules next to each other. Remember, because F is extremely electronegative and H is not very electronegative at all, the partially negative on the F and the partially positive on the H would be very partially negative and very partially positive, which means the attraction between these two molecules would be very strong. And if you remember from general chemistry, the name of this intermolecular force would be dipole-dipole interactions. And if you also remember, more specifically, this is actually called hydrogen bonding. Hydrogen bonding makes up the strongest dipole-dipole type interactions. So we could think of these two HF molecules being held together pretty tightly. Now, how do we know if we have hydrogen bonding? Well, it's easy to remember the mnemonic is have fun, H-F-O-N. Anytime you have H covalently bonded to either F, O, or N, the molecule can participate in hydrogen bonding. So let me show you what that means. Let's look at a typical alcohol right here. This is a very typical alcohol in organic chemistry. First, let's notice its features. What makes it an alcohol? Well, notice it does have carbon and hydrogens here on the left, but it has this OH group. This is what defines this molecule as an alcohol. We will learn more about alcohols in a later online lecture. And let's place the partially negative sign on the oxygen and the partially positive sign on the hydrogen. And notice we have an O covalently bonded to an H, which means this molecule can participate in hydrogen bonding. So let's see how that would look. Let's put another alcohol next to him. And the attraction would be right here. The negative on the oxygen would be attracted to the partially positive on the hydrogen. This would be your strong hydrogen bonding right here. And since these molecules are held together very tightly, it would take a lot of energy to break them apart, which just basically means that the boiling point for this substance would be high. The high temperature gives us more energy and that energy would go into breaking this hydrogen bond, separating these two molecules from the liquid phase to a gas phase. And just to give you an idea how more relatively stronger hydrogen bonding is, look at these two molecules right here. Notice they have the same number of carbons, the same number of hydrogens and oxygens. But look at their relative boiling points. Clearly the alcohol has a much higher boiling point than the ether. The ether wouldn't have hydrogen bonding because the hydrogens in the ether, they're all directly connected or covalently bonded to carbons, not to the oxygen. So therefore, the ether doesn't participate in hydrogen bonding. And that's why his boiling point is much less than the alcohol. Another molecule that can help us better understand intermolecular forces and their relationships to physical properties is something called the amine. And the first general principle I'd like you to know is that the higher the molecular weight of an amine, the higher its boiling point, and also the higher its melting point. However, amines have some of the highest boiling points out of many organic molecules. And this we need to understand why. What you see here is a typical amine in organic chemistry. Amines are organic molecules that have an sp3 hybridized nitrogen in them. We'll talk more about what constitutes an amine in a later online lecture. Now let me show you an example here of how amines could be connected to each other. 
Here is a two carbon amine right here. Let's place our partially negative and partially positive sign here. And let's stick another amine next to him right here. This would be the attraction between these two molecules. The partially negative nitrogen would be attracted to the partially positive hydrogen. And this is definitely a case of hydrogen bonding. So we expect this attraction to be pretty strong. However, one thing we should know is that this attraction is not as strong as what we observe in alcohols. For instance, look at this chart right here. If you were to compare the boiling points of these two molecules, notice they have the same number of carbons, but one has an oxygen making him an alcohol and the other one has a nitrogen making him an amine. Notice it's the alcohol that has a higher boiling point. And that's simply because the hydrogen bonding in alcohols are stronger than the hydrogen bonding in amines. You don't have to memorize that because it makes sense. Think about it, the oxygen is more electronegative than nitrogen. And that means an oxygen would have a greater partially negative charge on it than a nitrogen. Which means two alcohols side by side would be held together more strongly than two amines side by side. However, be careful here. Let me show you an example. This happens to be a tertiary amine. And let's look at the polar bonds here. Nitrogen is more electronegative than carbon, so this would be our partially negative and partially positive charges. If we have the exact same amine right here, let's think about how these two molecules would be held together. It would be between a partially negative charge on the nitrogen of one amine and the partially positive charge of a carbon on the other amine. However, this is not hydrogen bonding. We learned that you only have hydrogen bonding when H is covalently bonded to F, O, or N. For this particular amine, the nitrogens are directly bonded to carbons instead of hydrogens. So therefore, this bond would not be classified as a hydrogen bond. Which means tertiary amines have much lower boiling points than primary and secondary amines. Primary and secondary amines can participate in hydrogen bonding because they have at least a nitrogen covalently bonded to a hydrogen.